motivation, inspiration. It's all bullshit without taking action. International best-selling author, serial entrepreneur, tough love, no BS, high-performance coach with an attitude. Welcome to the Queendom, where we talk about proven strategies to scale your business and scale your mind for ultimate success. And here's your hostess, cash flow queen, Kenitra. Hey, peace and greetings. What is going on, family? All right, so let's dig into this episode. Before we start, let's come together and get present and take one deep, divine breath. Mm, that always feels so good just to be be present. Be present. All right. So, I've got another banger for you. And I want to give a shout out to um, one of the listeners that actually gave me the idea for today's talk. And today, what we're talking about is mental toughness. Mental toughness. Now, what's the uh, textbook definition for mental toughness? Well, the textbook definition says, Mental toughness is the ability to resist, manage, and overcome doubts, worries, concerns, and circumstances that prevent you from succeeding or excelling at a task or towards an objective or a performance outcome that you set out to achieve. The term mental toughness has long been used in sports psychology. Now, definitely in sports, you will see that a lot of athletes go within to gain their outer strength. Now, this concept and this part of psychology is not just for athletes. It's for anyone that wants to overcome an obstacle or a perceived obstacle or a perceived, and I'm doing air quotes as I say perceived, because it's all in our mind. There really are no obstacles. There really are no objectives, right? However, because we perceive them to be, then it could be a stumbling block as far as getting us from where we are to where we want to be. So I'm going to relate this to um, fitness and health. And I'm also going to relate this to business because I had another listener say, when are you going to start back talking about business? All, all the things that I'm talking about is making you a better person to make you a better entrepreneur, to make you a better business person, right? So we have to stop compartmentalizing things and understand that this life, it's about the totality of us. It's about the totality of us, right? So you just can't get healthy, right? And forsake everybody else or all your other things that you have going on in your life. You can't just be, you know, a great business person and not understand that, you know, the science of love and all of these other different things affects your entire life. So take all of the talks, the lectures, whatever it is that you want to call them, the episodes, and apply them into your life where they may fit. Okay. So mental toughness, I'm going to give you examples for me and how I was able to break through the perceived barriers, the perceived obstacles that were in my way as far as things that I wanted to accomplish, things that I was choosing for myself, 
how I was choosing to look, be, and feel. And I know my energy may be high today. Number one, I'm standing up. I have so much energy. Um, if you know, right, you've been following the episodes. I'm on day 12 of a water fast. <clears throat> day 12 for me is usually the magic number. It's like the magic number. I don't know what it is, right? That one and that two. But day 12 for me when I do an extended water fast, it's like the day that I have so much energy. So the first time, <clears throat> excuse me, the first time I did my first extended water fast, it was 33 days on day 12. This was back in 2019 when I first started. Um, my grandmother visited me. Now my grandmother has transitioned from this plane, from this dimension, right? But she visited me and uh, it was a beautiful, beautiful lucid dream. We had a good time. She reconciled some things that I was thinking in my mind. It was just beautiful. It was absolutely beautiful. Um, if you're interested in water fasting, I've got some episodes on the show about it, my journey and so forth. You know, do some research around it. Um, it's the best non-prescriptive medicine that you could ever give to yourself. Absolutely. So um, let's talk about this. For me, Two, two big, two big uh, experiences uh, that I've overcome in dealing with mental toughness. Uh, one thing that we have to, to get over is we have to get over other people's opinions or their so-called uh, judgments about us. That is one of the things that I see that a lot of people um, will, will uh, embrace and it, it inhibits them from doing, being, and, and, and just really having the type of life that they want because they're so concerned with how other people perceive them. One of my biggest, I would say my biggest flex, my biggest, absolute biggest flex is I don't give a damn. I don't give a damn. And I say that in a loving way because I'm going about my life. And I would hope that those around me are going about their life and doing the things that they love. So I don't give a damn about someone else's perception about me, right? That's a, that's a superpower. That's a superpower. And it definitely takes time to get there. It absolutely takes time to get there because I was not always there. Because we live in this society where we feel that if the external world is not loving up on us, if the external world is not giving us likes, you know, we feel bad about ourselves, right? So you've outsourced your happiness to other people. That doesn't make logical sense to me, right? So I had to reel myself back in mentally and start loving on myself, finding things about myself to love and then making new experiences for myself to love myself even more, i.e. working out, getting into shape, right? A lot of the mental fitness I had about working out in my diet, when I first started um, going into plant-based eating, the first thing, um, now I was raised in the South, so Southern people eat damn near anything. Um, I, I said maybe except rats uh, and, and cats, but, you know, pig, chicken, cow, fish, like everything. The insides of the pig, just everything. Just, yeah. Um, so when I first started, uh, made a decision, you know, saw people in my family passing away, the elders in my family passing away. The first one that hit me really, really hard was my great, great grandmother. And all of these people started to pass away and they were passing away because of high blood pressure, diabetes, uh, hypertension, all of these type of things that pointed right back to the diet. So I said, okay, all right, I'm gonna learn from their mistakes and I'm gonna do something different. So now the mental toughness game, <laughs> listen, it, it it, it, it's, it's, a, it's like a muscle that you have to build. It is a muscle that you have to build. Because not only are you fighting your own demons, 
and you're finding your own conversations that you're having with yourself. But now you have other people around you telling you, oh, it's okay. This is just the way we eat. It's okay. You can eat meat. You know, it's not going to harm you. You know, this is our tradition. This is our family culture. Blah, 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 blah. As I research more and more. Now, look, I'm not trying to turn any of you into a plant-based vegan. I don't care what you eat. Okay. I'm simply sharing with you my story and an example of mental toughness. So, um, the first thing I did was I said, okay, I'm going to take this thing in stages. All right. Think about what I'm saying here. Right. So whatever it is that you're, you're wanting to overcome, you're wanting to break through, you may want to take it in stages. Okay. So the first thing I did, I said, all right, I can give up red meat, right? That's, that's, I'm st I still got all this other meat. I can give up red meat. So that's what I did. I gave up red meat, right? So that was the, the, the first thing. Now, uh, at this, at this point in my life, I had not become the, uh, absolute phenomenal vegan chef that I am today. So I wasn't really doing any cooking. I was eating fast food, right? So I was eating out and you know, you know, buying stuff from fast food joints or what have you. Um, so my next phase, I was like, okay, all right. So I got rid of red meat. When, and actually, actually pork was the first one. Right, let me rewind. Pork was the first meat I got rid of. I got rid of pork. That was the first one. And then my next one was red meat. Now, um, during this process, you know, still eating out, I said, you know what? I gotta, I gotta at some point have some meals at home. Because if I'm, if I'm doing this for health reasons, I got to at some point have some meals at home. Now, mind you, the whole while that I'm going through this whole process, friends and family are telling me, you know, um, I, this is just the way we eat. It's okay. You know, we have an auntie that lived to 117. All of these different stories, you know, people will, they will tell you stories. They will enable you to stay at a standard of low vibration, not for your best interest, but for their comfort. Think about that. People will tell you things and they'll coddle you and, oh, it's all right. And they'll join your pity party, not out of your best interest, but for their comfort. We're selfish beings. We're selfish beings. It is what it is. Okay. So if you're that way, don't be that way. But anyway, that was um, the, the physical stuff. Now, in business, let's talk about business since, since, since uh, I've got a couple of comments about getting back to business. In business, um, I started my first business. I was about, I was in middle school. So what was I, 12, 13, something like that. Started my first business. Uh, my first business was basically, um, I was doing arbitrage. <laughs> I, I know the term now that I'm older, but back then I didn't know the term. All I knew was that the candy store uh, that we had inside the school didn't open up to a certain time. And uh, I was going to not only open up earlier, meaning I was going to have my candy out before the candy store opened up in school, but I was also going to uh, actually charge cheaper prices than, than uh, the uh, candy store. So I got two wins. I'm open earlier than them and my prices are cheaper. So which one do you want? Kids say like, hey, I, cheaper prices gives me more candy. So that was my first little business. And I started doing art and all this kind of stuff. But um, once I got into the real world of business, I guess about um, 19, um, what was it, 93 or 4, I had a little, like a little network marketing business or something. And I remember my uncle telling me, and I'll never forget this. And he'll probably never remember. He's a lot older now. But um, he told me this is a, uh, an example of having mental toughness. People will tell you things not for your best interest, but to keep them comfortable. He told me, he was like, why don't you just go get a regular job? Why are you always trying to do these different businesses and stuff like that? And I'm like, what? Like, wow, that's a great pep talk, Unc appreciate you. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like what? <laughs> uh, but I'll never forget that. We were, we were on his porch 
and, and and this is what he had to say to me. And I'm like, you know, wow. And and at that at that point in time, I'm young and dumb. Don't know that, you know, those closest to you are the ones that will hurt you the worst. Uh, but I persevered through that. Right. And I kept going and I can't I probably have done a hundred different ideas of businesses and a large part of those 80 percent have been failures. But guess what? If I listen to other people about what it is that Queen is choosing for her life, I'd be miserable like those people. You would be miserable like whoever it is that you're listening to that's stopping you from being and doing and having the things that you want in your life. Sometimes you have to be your own counsel. You have to be your own counsel. That is one of the 42 ideals of Ma'at. I seek my own counsel. So if you see me anywhere out in the world talking to myself, don't think I'm crazy. I'm getting expert advice. Okay. So <clears throat> mental toughness, you know, what I can tell you, I'm just, I'm going to make this real short here, but uh, what I can tell you, some of the steps that you may want to incorporate to actually build your mental toughness is you want to set small wins for yourself every single day, set small wins for yourself, set things on your to-do list that you absolutely know that you are going to do, right? Now let's not be, let's not be uh, uh, pessimistic about it, you know, get up, brush my teeth, you know, you're going to do that kind of stuff, but maybe exercise or maybe call that friend that, that, um, you haven't talked to in a long time, or maybe, um, <clears throat> at work, you want to present this idea, you know, at your job, right? You want to present, uh, a, a new strategy, whatever it may be, put it on your list. And every single day, just take the 24 hours, take, take your life 24 hours at a time, right? Set it up in chunks of 24 hours at a time. Sometimes we look so far out and, and we get overwhelmed and we think, oh man, this is just, this is just so much that, 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 I, that I'm trying to do. Take it 24 hours at a time, right? So if you got 10 year goals, that's great. You got 20 year goals, that's great. Now break it down, break it down, break it down to what do we need to do in these next 24 hours? What are the things that we can check off our list? And what are the things that we will accomplish no matter what? Not listening to anybody else, not taking advice from people that don't have our best interest at heart, but sticking through and breaking through and having a successful 24 hours. Think about it like that. Think about it like that. And then just do it. Just do it. The worst thing that can happen is you'll fail. You'll fall on your face. You'll be rejected. You'll be told no. You'll be laughed at. Right? But so what? So what? Who cares? It doesn't affect who you are. That doesn't affect the magnificence that's flowing through your being that does not affect the divine spark that dwells inside of you it has absolutely no effect on your being. So look, family, keep loving on yourself. Keep pushing past the perceived barriers and keep going after what it is that you're choosing for yourself. Peace and unconditional love. Thank you for tuning in. Please like, share, and subscribe via iTunes and Google Play for upcoming episodes. If you're committed to scaling your business and life to the next level, book a free strategy session with Cashflow Queen Kenitra by visiting the website, nobscloser.com. Again, that's nobscloser.com. Again, visit nobscloser.com to book a free strategy session today.